So if you're wondering if you need a visa for Bali, how to get a visa on arrival, if you need to extend your visa, then this is our experience of having done all those things. So to begin with, many nationalities are actually able to enter Indonesia visa-free for a period of 30 days. So definitely check out and see if you're one of those nationalities because that will make your life very easy if you're coming for 30 days or less. Yes, that's the case for Australians. We'll try and link below to the official site with the most current list of nationalities. But basically that just means you buy your ticket, you get on the plane, you turn up at the airport and you don't need to go through any visa processing. So that's super easy if you're just coming to Bali for a short holiday or up to 30 days like Chris said. So if you're not one of these countries that can enter visa free, then you're most likely going to be able to get a visa on arrival, which is also a really easy process. Yeah, you just get off the plane, you'll see signs pointing you towards the visa on arrival or VOA desk. Yeah. Uh, usually there's not too many people on that line now because a lot of countries are visa free. So you can go straight to that desk. Of course, check all this with your particular nationality and the processes you have. But if you do need to get a visa on arrival, there is a small little desk there before immigration. You need to go to that desk, um, pay for your visa on arrival, they'll put it in your passport and then you continue on through immigration. It is a cash only payment, but there is an ATM very close by, right next to the, the desk. The most current prices um, as of a couple of weeks ago are 500,000 IDR for a visa on arrival. Yeah, so they'll give you the prices in lots of different currencies, we can show you those. But the easiest way for us is just to get the cash out of the ATM at the airport. So if you want to stay longer than 30 days in Bali, you have a couple of options. The first time we did this, we actually were able to get a two month or 60 day visa in our country, Australia, at the local embassy or consulate. Um, apply for that. It took us about a week, I think, to get our visa. Yeah, we had to turn up and we dropped off our passports, filled out some paperwork, then we left them and then we had to return back to collect them. Yeah, probably about three or four days later, I yeah. think we could pick them up. I think there's a few different brackets of time, but for us, it was pretty accurate to what we signed up for. Yeah, you may be able to do this process by mail as well, um, but it's probably easier if you have a consulate or embassy um, near where you live to do this. So that way, once you get to Bali, again, you just go straight to through immigration and you can then stay in Bali for 60 days and you don't need to do anything extra once you're here. This is definitely a really easy way to do it. And if you are in a country that can do this, like Australia, it's probably a really easy way to do it that way. When you get into the country, you've got your 60 days and that's all taken care of. You don't need to worry about extensions. So another option is to extend when you're actually in Indonesia or in Bali in this instance. Even though we've got 30 days visa free as Australian passport holders, if you are wanting to stay longer than 30 days, you'll need to actually get a visa on arrival. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did this time. So we just went straight to that visa on arrival desk. There was no wait whatsoever. Went and got cash out at the ATM, paid our 500,000 IDR each. They will put a visa on arrival into your passport. Then they'll point you to the direction of a immigration line that's specifically for people getting visas on arrival, where they'll date it. And we just read that you need to be diligent that they actually put the right visa in there and that they date it the day that's correct. Otherwise that will really impact your process of extending. So from here, the process is generally you have to head to an immigration office within the, the visa period that you've got. When we got our visa on arrival stamped, we were told that we should start this process at least seven days before the visa period ended. Yeah, so that's just to make sure they have enough time to process it before your actual 30 day visa runs out. Really important. And now to do this process of actually extending your visa on arrival, there's a couple of ways to do it. The first way is to go to the immigration office yourself. If you do it this way, it'll be three separate visits. The first visit to obviously fill out the forms and hand it all over. A second visit to do the fingerprints and photos and a third visit to pick it all up. So, and at the time of this video, there was two immigration offices which you could be doing this, doing this through, one in Denpasar and one in Jimbaran. So this can be a little bit time consuming if you're doing this yourself. You also need to make sure you have transport to get to the immigration office um, and understand all the paperwork and know what you're doing. It is definitely possible and you can do this yourself. If you do it this way, I make sure you start a little bit earlier, the whole process to make yeah. sure you don't run over. But there is a slightly easier but more expensive way to do it if you want to do that too. 
Yeah, so basically there are lots of different people, lots of different agencies, lots of different companies that will offer a visa extension service. So basically what they'll do is they'll lodge all the paperwork for you. They'll come pick up the passport from your accommodation in certain areas, mm -hmm. drop it off at immigration, then can help you with transport to the immigration office, back from the immigration office, as well as then dropping the passport with a visa extension ready to go back to your hotel as well. Yeah, so if you do it this way, basically you're paying for the convenience. Um, as Chris said, it really only requires one visit on our behalf to go to the immigration yeah. office rather than three. So they will pick it up personally. We don't need to go to the immigration office for the first and last visit. They will actually drop it off and pick it up for us. Yeah. So we did this and it was super convenient. I have to admit we were a little bit concerned yeah. at first if we picked the right agent or if it was going to be a smooth process. Um, we I had mean, a few questions yeah. in our mind. I mean, obviously handing your passport over to somebody that turns up to your accommodation on a scooter and then just drives away with your passport, <laughs> then it's not always the most comfortable feeling. Yeah. But we were super happy with the people that we chose. This isn't sponsor or anything like that. We just heard this from friends of ours that did this in Bali. Yeah. So we chose to go with a certain company and we couldn't be happier. So there is a few options for this. Obviously different companies might charge slightly varying prices to do this. It is much more expensive than getting it done yourself and making those three trips to immigration, but it's obviously a lot more convenient and it allows you to actually spend that time that you're in Bali in yeah. Bali than always being at the immigration office. And it just makes everything a lot clearer because you can ask any questions you have directly to them. Um, and the process is really, really smooth. If you decide on this option, then most services will offer you either a standard service, which might be between maybe seven and 14 working days. So obviously you need to start this earlier in the process. You can also pay for um, an express service, which can range from anything from three, three to, to five, five. days. Um, or somewhere in between, depending which company you choose. So this is obviously more expensive, but it means that you're without your passport for less time in Bali, yeah. which is kind of important, especially if you check in and checking out of accommodation, they might require both of your passports to register you here. Yeah. So we opted with the express service, which was between three and five days. Yeah, and everything was pretty much like clockwork for us. Yeah. We can't guarantee that'll be the same experience for you, but we're just sharing our experience. And for us, the communication was great. The, the times were exactly what we were promised when the passports were taken away. And yeah, we're really happy. Yeah, so we actually arrived in Bali and they recommend if you do it through a service that you can start the process as soon as you arrive, which I think worked great for us because then you yeah. have no um, worry if you're pushing it too close to the end of your visa. Yeah. So we basically arrived, got off the plane and in Bali on that very first day they came to our accommodation and picked it up Monday afternoon. And then we went to the immigration office on, was it Wednesday? Two days later. Yeah, Wednesday morning they picked us up took us to Jimbaran Immigration. We were in and out within maybe five minutes. Yeah, it was a super quick process. It was literally five minutes mm -hmm. in the door, out the door. We got our fingerprints taken and a photo taken, really easy, and then we just headed back. Then we got the message the following night that the passports had been collected from immigration and that we'd get them the next morning. Then we got them the next morning. Yeah, so dropped it in Monday afternoon and got it back uh, Friday morning, morning lunchtime. Yeah. So that was pretty good. One thing you do have to keep in mind with doing these services and even just doing it yourself when you're here in Bali is that they do not process any of these things on national holidays or public holidays. So just take a look at the public holidays here before you start this process and make sure you're timing it at a time that it's easy to do. Yeah. I think probably the worst period to do this would be around the period of Ramadan because there is a lot of public holidays and it might extend your process maybe up to two weeks. So just keep an eye on that one. But otherwise, a holiday here or there shouldn't be too much impact on your process. So one thing that we definitely recommend is just stay in the one area, in the one hotel or one accommodation so you won't get yourself in strife in terms of checking in, needing a passport to check in or anything like that. Yeah. Um, definitely keep a photocopy or whatnot with you during that time as well. But all in all, probably best to stay in the one area for five days or a week just to get the process finished before you need to move on. And if you can't do that for whatever reason, then I do believe you can get a letter written from maybe the service as to why you don't have your passport on you at that time. You can also definitely keep a photocopy like Chris said, and maybe at the place that you're intending to check in without your passport, perhaps 
email them in advance or give them a call and let them know the situation and see what your options are if you can give it to them at the end of your stay or if you have to go there before you check in when you still have your passport but I'm sure it'll be fine some places you do have to do two passports some places you don't so I think just keep that in mind when you're doing the process so thanks so much for watching guys if you guys have been through this process before or you're planning on we'd love to hear from you below of your experience as well and we'll have a full blog post with all the details linked below on almostlanding-bali.com if you need anything else if you found this useful or liked it we really appreciate a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video